Welcome to another show, I'm Sid and in today's video I'll be going over the Pixel 8 shader patch in Spark AR Studio which is a program used to create filters and effects for Facebook and Instagram. I'll also be implementing this loop animation to give you an example of some of the things that you can do with these simpler patches uh, and how to incorporate like different effects and things. So if you haven't already hit like, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe so you can stay notified when I upload new videos. With that being said I'll pause this, we'll create a new project and let's just get straight into it. So I'll maximize this out, we'll switch back over to my face, hi how's it going, uh, and now what we're going to need, first thing up we're going to come over here to layers and we're going to add a foreground layer and a background layer, it's important to keep those set everything separate so that when you're using stuff it you know just keeps things more organized and simple. Next we're going to add a rectangle which will appear nested inside this canvas, then we're going to hit duplicate so we have two of those rename one foreground and one background and then we'll make sure that they're on the same layers as the actual foreground and backgrounds that we've set up so we've got that done now we want to adjust the size so we'll hit control collect and we'll highlight both so we can adjust the size of both to fill height and fill width of the screen so now we've got that we want material layers so we'll add a material layer for the foreground name that foreground and a material layer for our background which we'll name background so now we want to control select both of these materials, change the shader type to flat, and we're good. So now we'll come up here to camera, we want texture segmentation and texture extraction, it's highlighted. So now these two textures will appear in our assets panel, and we can come under here to FG to foreground, and we can add the camera texture to our diffuse shader texture here. And if we highlight, check this alpha box, we can add person segmentation mask here, which will not only cut us out from the background, but it will also allow us to like have this actual background which I've created. It's basically what we've done so far is made your very simple green screen effect. Yeah, I won't have the green there for now, but you see what I'm going for. So next up we're gonna do is show, our, show off our patch editor and we're gonna add assets. So we're gonna import from our AR library. This is where we come under patch assets, shaders, and we're gonna be using our pixelate shader today. So you wanna import that into your project and there it is so now we've got that we're going to hit the pixelate shader and we're going to drag that into our patch editor and we're also going to need some inputs and some outputs so we're going to be for the purposes of this i'll be pixelating the foreground so it's just my face that will be getting pixelated so we'll add that in and we'll connect that up straight away so that's just sitting there next up we want our camera texture which we already have here in our assets panel so you can just drag that and that'll appear as uh, its own patch in here and um, we also want our device. So if you come up here to device, which is the main thing, which all of this other stuff's nested inside, you click that, you drag that in here, you'll get a little device patch as well. Now we want to connect these up. Now we want to connect these up, sorry. So we've got our camera texture here, RGBA, we're going to connect to texture, and device, we're going to connect the screen size to the device screen size. See, now everything's back to normal again. There's currently zero amount of pixelation. So if I increase that, let's say to 25, you can immediately see, I'll make this slightly larger, you can immediately see that the pixelation effect is there. It's working quite well. You can go even higher. You can go all the way up to 50. You can go to 100. <laughs> I don't know if it goes any higher than that. Oh, it does. Now we're just 1,000. is just one big old pixel. But yeah, uh, I'll pull this back down for now. We'll go to like 10 just so you can still see me but get a sense of the pixelation. So yeah, that is basically your pixelate effect. It's very simple. There's not much to it at all. So I wanted to show you something a little bit extra. If I separate these out now, we can add another patch for loop animation. So we've got that here. And from progress, you wanna add a transition patch. So we've got that. And where it says vector three down here, you wanna click this and you wanna change it to a number. So you've got all these different options for vectors, numbers, colors. You wanna change this transition to a number. And then we're gonna connect it up here to the amount. So now we have our loop animation which is connected to this transition, which starts at zero and ends at one. So this is the amount here between which this is looping. So if we say set that to 100, you'll immediately see it's going up from zero to 100 and then resetting immediately, which is kind of cool. It's like a weird looking effect. What we can do is we can change the duration of this. So it's currently going from zero to 100 in one second and then starting back around from zero to 100. And it's doing that over and over again. If you bear in mind that uh, an Instagram story is typically 15 seconds, you can 
adjust that. So now you can have the duration last 15 seconds and it will go from zero to 100 over the course of a 15 second period, after which point it will reset and start that process over again. You can also here have this little mirrored, if you check mirrored, then it will go from zero to 100, but it will also cycle backwards. And when I do it this way, when I do the mirrored effects, because the story itself is 15 seconds long, I like to do it mirrored at 7.5 second duration. That way it kind of goes up, comes back down within the duration of one 15 second story. So there's that. I'll reduce it a little bit so you can get like a, a clearer picture of what's actually happening. There's not much to this, if I'm being completely honest. You can even add a, a screen tap or some kind of other interaction. So we've got a screen tap here, which is a patch. If I try and connect this up to a loop animation, it will automatically create this switch here. So that's all done in the background for you. You don't have to think about things like that as much. So now we've got our screen tap connected to our switch, which enables this loop animation that runs for 7.5 seconds up and then is mirrored. So it runs back down for 7.5 seconds and transitions which and transitions between zero and 50, which is the amount of pixelation that we're seeing on screen at any given time. So now if I hit refresh, you'll see I've added the screen tap. So now I'm at zero again. If I simulate touch, uh, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see it happening. Then if I click on the screen, then now I've enabled this loop animation and it will start moving from zero up to 50 and back again. I can also pause it at any time. So I'm still talking, you see the video is still moving, but the actual pictures of pixels themselves aren't changing size anymore. So that's worth noting. Like I said, this is a very simple effect. I'm just trying to get back into uh, making videos like this, learning how to make filters again. So this whole thing's very much a learning experience for me. I can even like, I'll switch this back so make it like a nice blue background for a while. But yeah, that's very much the entire effect. Uh, I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you very much. I hope you found this useful or entertaining in some way. If you did, don't forget to like, leave a comment and subscribe. I want to make as many tutorials as I can. So I'm trying to get like all of these simpler, simpler techniques out of the way. Remind myself of what I was learning before I broke my laptop so that I can get back into it as quickly and efficiently as possible for both myself and for you. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you next time. Peace.